and welcome to a special episode of my new Will and Twine Fiber Studio podcast. Today is not going to be a traditional um, podcast episode as my last ones, but more of an introduction of something very exciting that I've been working on the last couple of months. Um, I'm still experimenting with these kind of formats and how to introduce um, my work and what I'm doing and my new products and um, yeah so I'm always glad for feedback and yeah I hope um, you will like this kind of introduction um, and yeah let me know and hope you enjoy. So without further ado what I want to introduce to you today is this um, a new limited edition yarn that has been custom spun for Wool & Twine Fiber Studio. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, it's 25% uh, Gotland and 75% um, black lamb's wool blend. Um, and it's a DK weight this time. So um, I got this spun to 250 meter per 100 grams. Although it knits up more like worsted or iron weight, I would say, because when I was swatching, I got a 10 centimeter gauge with 18 to 19 stitches on a 4 to 4.5 millimeter needle, and I really like the fabric this made. Um, I can actually show you because I have my swatch here. Um, it's, yeah, I really like the fabric. Um, that this gauge creates and it's actually kind of drapey and Yeah, so I would say it knits up more like a worsted weight which makes really great value actually because it still has 250 meters per hundred grams, but you will um, You can go much further with that yarn um, because it's a little bit more plump and plushy and Yeah, has a really nice drape to it um, yeah, the Gotlin actually brings a little bit of a halo. I don't know if you can see that. I will also insert um, some clips. But yeah, the Gotlin gives you kind of a halo, which makes this blend really, really warm. And the lamps will actually create a really lovely softness. And um, although it's rustic, definitely, I would say it's a really nice, warm and soft rusticness, if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, you could also knit it on a tighter gauge and it would be great for smaller garments like hats or mittens. I'm experimenting with knitting a hat in this yarn right now, so I will keep you updated on that. Um, but yeah, for garments I would say it knits up more like a worsted weight. Um, yeah, it has a lovely drape I would say. No, no, it's not really drapey but you can see that this is like moving a little bit when I when I hold it like this so it's not as dry and stiff as some woolen um, woolen spaniards can feel sometimes so um, yeah it's a bit more drapey than your regular woolen spun yarn I would say and yeah, that makes it perfect for garments for me. Like I can really imagine really great sweaters and um, cardigans in this yarn. So yeah, let's see. Okay, um, a little bit more about the color of this yarn. Um, it's actually, although it appears um, really dark gray, um, it actually has a really light brownish tinge to it. Um, like, if you know a Gotland blend usually has very slate grey um, undertones, it's not very warm, it's more on the coolish side. But because we've added the lamb's wool to this, and the lamb's wool is actually um, a dark brown black, if you will, like you might know from Hebridean sheep or so, or darker Shetland. Um, colors. Um, this gave a little bit more of a brownish undertone, um, which I absolutely love because it's 
yeah, it's really, um, it's really warm still, even though it's so dark and it has a very, yeah, versatile color to it, I feel. Um, yeah. By the way, I hope uh, the light keeps changing right now. The weather is really crazy. We have something between bright sun and snow today, so I hope um, it doesn't bother you too much. And I will definitely um, post more pictures and also some close-up videos of the yarn so you can really see the colors. Um, because I'm afraid that the light is really um, yeah, tricky today. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so what I wanted to say is that the color of this yarn is actually um, only natural color from sheep. So it's not been dyed and it will only be available in its undyed state because I feel like this color is so stunning. I don't want to really dye on it or anything. Um, yeah, I think that would be a waste of the beautiful natural color. Um, and yeah. So let me tell you a little bit more backstory to this yarn because it has actually been created in collaboration with Patricia of uh, Lecker Sheep Farm. Um, and I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what she does and what her work is because it's just very awesome. <laughs> um, so I met Patricia last year on Instagram and we started exchanging our thoughts on wool and um, sheep and sustainable farming, sustainable production. And um, after a couple of weeks of chatting and um, calling each other, we decided we wanted to work together actually. And um, so I visited her last winter and it was an absolutely magical day because um, I was able to see her sheep and pet them and actually be close to them, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what she actually is doing or her backstory because it's really awesome. Um, she actually uh, studied and um, worked in the same city that I'm living in right now. Um, and she actually used to live two streets away from here, which is really cool somehow. Um, but had a family background in farming because her dad was a shepherd as well. And um, yeah, after yeah working on a computer all day and everything, she decided she needed a little bit more of outside time and. Um, wanted to be surrounded by animals and so she decided to become a part-time shepherdess in the countryside really close to where I live um, and yeah build up her own um, flock and everything and yeah she keeps um, several flocks mainly for maintaining landscapes and for um, meat production and the sheep are kept outside um, all year round except for the lambing season um, which is actually right now so if you want to follow her on Instagram and uh, check her stories out it's the cutest she posts so many lambs at the moment and it's just uh, magical and yeah so she keeps these different um, flocks and actually experiments with different breeds and um, yeah she always wants to see what breeds bring advantages um, in these kind of um, weather conditions because we don't have the best weather conditions um, for keeping sheep here. Um, but she's always uh, trying to find ways and um, to e explore new breeds and I really like to see that um, yeah she's so open-minded when it comes to um, experimenting with different breeds. And yeah that craving of being outside and being surrounded by the animals um, um, is something I can totally relate to. And uh, yeah, she described it, the feeling um, of being very lucky whenever she's outside with her sheep and um, being surrounded by them. And that's also what inspired her name. That's uh, Lique Sheep Farm. So Lique means um, 
luck in Danish and so yeah that's what she wanted to express that um, the feeling of being outside with animals um, is something that makes her very lucky feel very lucky so yeah and also being surrounded by them all of the time um, led her to thinking about um, what to do with the wool because yeah as most of you know um, wool doesn't have a high value like monetary value here in most European countries and so keeping sheep for the purpose of producing wool and living from that as a shepherd is basically impossible and very difficult but Patricia always saw the value in the wool and um, was trying to think about what to do with it um, but she didn't really have like a connection to knitting or anything very strong to the fiber community so um, yeah when we met um, yeah I could see from the quality of the raw wool that she really had an eye on um, not wasting it like making something from it and that was what made me very happy and um, this is also why um, this yarn has such great quality because she just really took care of the wool and so it doesn't felt and doesn't get too dirty and stuff. So yeah, and now this came to life and um, yeah, I'm just really happy that this worked out. And yeah, actually um, when I was visiting her last time and she was telling me about her work, I was also really fascinated about her sheep dogs that she keeps because they are so well trained and I never saw a sheep dog in action and I was honored to see that um, when I visited her and yeah it was so fascinating how um, the connection between a human and a dog and or two dogs and the flock of sheep how it all worked together and how easily um, yeah, how easily they all got along and how it worked. It was so fascinating and um, at that point she also told me that she also trains her own sheepdog so she also does um, that herself. Um, she has a lot of experience from her family background if I remember correctly and yeah her dogs are crazy well trained and that's also what she wants to um, yeah, be doing and continue doing in the future. So. Yeah, it's really fascinating and yeah, it was a really great experience uh, working with another young woman who's interested in sustainability and um, wool production and uh, sustainable farming and yeah, it was just, uh, it just all intertwined really well and so um, we both poured our heart into this yarn that is now available or it's going to be available. And yeah, it was one of those collaborations that really inspired me to keep going with what I'm doing because it's just meeting these kind of people who share your interest in a way that they have a different perspective looking at it. Um, it's just, it really keeps me going and really inspires me. So I'm very thankful that, that this uh, could happen. And yeah, definitely um, check her Instagram out. She's actually in the process of building up a website. Um, where she will make a lot of more sheep products available one day and I can already tell it's going to be amazing so I'll let you know whenever that um, what that website drops but um, yeah just give her a follow and um, maybe see what she's doing it's just really interesting and I love to see her um, Instagram stories and how she's going along with the sheep and yeah it's just really lovely Okay, enough backstory about the yarn. Let's get to the facts. Um, this new limited edition base number two will be available um, in the next shop update, which will be on the 18th of April, 8 p.m. GMT plus two. Um, and yeah, if this calls your name, um, I would recommend shopping that update because it's only very small amount that I got spun so um, I don't know how long it will last so yeah if this speaks to you and um, you like this yeah, 
you can get it at the 18th of April. Um, I will definitely um, keep some skeins of this for myself because I can really see myself needing a cardigan or a sweater out of this. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this space and I can um, imagine myself wearing it quite a lot. Yeah, so I hope you liked this little introduction video for this new a limited edition base. Let me know if there are any questions that I might have forgotten to cover um, and also if you like this kind of um, backstories, behind the scenes info about a new yarn, um, a little bit more info about the people who created it um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this little video and um, speak to you soon. Bye.